And, and for those unfamiliar, I really want to introduce them yeah. to, to Willie Gaston. But um, to think today, I get to call you Galena Park North Shore head football coach, yeah. Willie Gaston. How good does that sound? They wasted no time. Uh, the next day, they hired Willie Gaston, the offensive coordinator for North Shore, to become the next head coach of the mighty Mustangs there at North Shore High School. When I was younger in elementary, of course, you know, I, I wanted to play football, and um, I had an opportunity where my dad moved to that to the east side of town, and and my, we moved over there with him because they had a new head coach named David Amon that everybody was fired up to have, and, he, and Coach Amon took North Shore to a different level. It was a program that never made the playoffs at all until he got there in 1994, so again, I was in young and elementary, and then all of a sudden I was playing little league football and rack football league over there on the east side where everybody played. And when I got to middle school going to Cunningham, and it was it was unbelievable because when I was able to play football in seventh grade, that's when Coach K got the job as a, one of the middle school coaches. And you could tell right then and there he was special. He's ripped my butt more than any probably anybody ever <laughs> growing through a program. I tell some of my kids, like, you think I had that same coach rip me from seventh grade, and when I went to eighth grade, I was like, oh, he's going to be a seventh grade coach. We're good. Next thing I know, he's an eighth grade coach. And I'm like, oh, he's followed my whole <laughs> career. And then it's like getting ready. I can I can remember this like yesterday. I can remember going to the summer workouts, going into ninth grade, and then all of a sudden, I see Coach K. I'm like, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm going to be a freshman coach. I'm like, well, you got to be kidding <laughs> no, me. So no. it's just, <laughs> it's like you go, it was just like, you oh my God, I can't escape him. I only escaped him for like one year. <laughs> Going into my sophomore year, I was on varsity coach. K became the head freshman coach. Junior year, <laughs> now he's a varsity coach. I'm like, this dude, so his path of acceleration, he, like I said. That's kind of trippy. That's a super small it's, world. It's, maybe it's, not a quick, maybe he had this all planned out. Yeah, it's, uh, I tell him, you know. I'm looking I, at you, John K. We know yeah, what you're up. We know exactly. you're always planning. And all like kids always <laughs> think he controls the weather and all that stuff. So I was like, maybe he got some Jedi mind trick that he's all doing on this. But, and he's like that special of a dude and you know. Now when did you join his staff and how did that unfold? Well I joined their, their staff back in 2018. I was just recently released by the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I can remember uh, it's me and my big, my big buddy Dylan Limeberry who played at North Texas and we was just going to go visit those guys up there and we both were supposed to be starting jobs at Ferguson Plumbing Supply. He's still working there to this day making wow. tons of money. Wow. So, do, do well. yeah. You're both doing yeah. well. Doing so. so he's still <laughs> working there to this it. day and I can remember Coach Amon <laughs> just saying, look here, we got this coaching open. I think you need to hop on it. I think it'll be good for you. And it's kind of like, no, nah, I'm good, Coach. I, you know, and it was just like, no, you're going to take the job. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> you didn't, so you didn't really have a choice. Yeah, it's like you didn't have a choice. So, and, and it, I'll tell you what, you know. Again, he's got it all planned got out. Got it you all just planned. Play. And it really worked out for me. So I can remember being a freshman coach in that fall. 2008 and going to my first coaching school in San Antonio and just being wide-eyed and then it's like oh wow you get to see a lot of your buddies that you play football with in college and they're coaching now and you just get to see coaches that that was on the staff at North Shore when you played and mm -hmm. it's just so many guys you can come here and connect and, and just rekindle relationships with guys you lost touch with. Walk me through um how all of this unfolded this offseason it did happen pretty quickly. It was quick like you said it was, a week tops and it's like, like I said I came to Coach K I've been knowing Coach K forever I knew he was kind of off talked to him that Monday morning and just asked him like everything's good and he's like well right you want me to come check out their, their job they got open and uh, I think I'm gonna go take a look at it and it was on a, on a Monday he's gonna be there on a Thursday to look at it and he was there all day Thursday calls me Thursday night you can hear the excitement kind of in his voice that he, he enjoyed it but you know he had these opportunities before and he and he never jumped on it right. so me thinking oh he ain't gonna take this and we'll be back to work as normal as usual on, on friday well he let he like i said he called me that night friday for sure he told me that he's gonna end up taking the job and then monday he was letting the kids know and tuesday i was introduced as the head coach his impact on me has been tremendous and i i'm sitting here because of him and coach amon and you know those guys really pave the way for me to get to this moment where I'm at right now. How did success at North Shore, particularly as a coach, change you, change your perspective, change the outlook on not only the climb, but in kind of remaining up there to totally different? You know, I think in so many ways you can define success. Is, is, it, is it winning championships or is it impacting kids' life and change? So I think it's, it's got to be a... Um, you know, a even kill balance of both of, you know, yeah, you want to be successful, you want to try to win championships, but at the end of the day, 
you not winning a uh, championship ain't gonna make you say you're not a successful coach. You know, there's a bunch of successful coaches that don't get a chance to go compete for this. And we know being a part of it, being on that side and being able to go compete for this, this is a hard thing too. Mm -hmm. to, you know, just stay at that point and it's... Isn't that a different yeah, challenge? That, that's some, a challenge in itself right there. And I think... And some coaches are facing that yeah. right now. So what would you tell them? I, I think you just embrace the grind, you know, and, and yeah, understand like, hey, if you don't win a championship, that's not a, what you know. That's not what it's all about. Sometimes it's, it's about really impacting the program, impacting the community, and uh, and having good coaches. Like I think that's the number one thing I'm taking from this. Been at the Hall of Honor the other day, watching all those guys talk, and you know, and I'm and I'm looking there, and I'm taking my notes on my phone because that's where you want to be at one day. And my one thing they all said it was a good staff, and uh, I think as coaches are getting into this. You got to have good people around you that you can work with and, and understand this game and better, you know, mold young men.